touch you down on the streets of McAllister, Oklahoma. What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at large. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about the dark side of this town, uh, McAllister, Oklahoma. I have been through this town so many times. I've done a couple videos here, but I've never really stopped to explore the sites of this area. So in this video, I'm gonna show you uh, some you know, places of note, some uh, places where dark things have happened. And uh, it just snowed right now, and it's melting right now. Today is pretty warm for this time of year anyways in Oklahoma, it's about 52 degrees. And I've always been fascinated with how, when it snows, how it just melts and then the water, you know, dripped off of the roof. I don't know why, but I love that sound. I love when snow is melting. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna talk briefly about the history of McAllister. You're probably wondering, what is McAllister? Where is McAllister? I've never been there. Well, if you've never been there, you're not able to travel like I do, stick around, I'll show you a couple sites. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this video that always tells me if you guys like something or you don't like it. So without further ado, uh, let's start uh, driving around this berg. In case you're wondering what the special rates is for this apartment, uh, it would be these buildings right in back of this shrub. Uh, if you're interested in renting something, uh, a one bedroom goes for $7.95 a month and it comes with cable TV and all your utilities included. And a two bedroom is gonna run you $9.95 a month also with your cable television and all utilities uh, included. Uh, the management told me that uh, it's a pretty safe building. And uh, if I want to fill out an application, uh, go to a website, I believe it was uh, rental okay dot net or something like that anyways i just had a call to <laughs> see what the rents here were going for so McAllister, oklahoma just like a lot of other you know towns it started off as a trading post uh where people would stop meet up uh trade goods uh render services or what have you later on in 1872 they started building a railroad into town and by 1899, uh, McAllister and South McAllister, uh, they were both incorporated together and just made one city, which is what we know now as McAllister, Oklahoma. I'm walking down this hill right now. So that's Carl Albert Parkway. That's pretty much the, I would say, maybe the main street here in McAllister. Uh, Carl Albert was uh, the Speaker of the House uh, from 1971 to 1977. So in a sense, uh, he was, you know, at the time of the uh, Nixon debacle when he got um, impeached, he was one heartbeat away from being the President of the United States of America. Uh, McAllister was basically founded on uh, coal mining. And let me tell you, back in those days, uh, coal mining was very, very, dangerous work. Uh, many, many men have died uh, working the coal mines out here in Oklahoma and, you know, all throughout the world. Uh, the current population of this town, I want to say it's just a little bit above 18,000. Uh, we're about 90 miles south of Tulsa and about 130 miles southeast of Oklahoma City. Basically, McAllister has two main employers, the Army Ammunitions Plant, which is a little bit south of here. And of course, you have the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, which we're gonna be showing you later uh, in the video. It's about two and a half miles over yonder. Uh, the Army Ammunitions Plant basically makes uh, every single bomb that has uh, ever either exploded over somewhere or is going to explode over somewhere. So they're a pretty major employer, employer in this area as is the prison. Uh, you have uh, a story we're gonna get into a little bit later about uh, a very bad prison riot that happened, I think in the early 1970s, I wanna say 1973. Uh, this area right here, uh, this would be, I wouldn't call it the arts district, but uh, if you're in McAllister or you're coming through McAllister, uh, you're going to want to come down here and uh, maybe uh, visit some of the cool little shops or restaurants uh, in McAllister. This would be the cool little drag 
down here on Choctaw Avenue. And if you guys did not know, um, medicinal, medicinal use of marijuana is quite legal here in the state of Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, you have Royal Leaf Dispensary right there. If you want to uh, acquire uh, the right to purchase marijuana here in Oklahoma, uh, you're going to have to be either a uh, Oklahoma resident or have a friend who's an Oklahoma resident. And then you got to go through a series of uh, a, a doctor visit, uh, get your license, and then you can go ahead and uh, smoke all of the weed. You can uh, absolutely stand. Now that we've talked about briefly, briefly the history of McAllister, uh, now we're going to get to the main focus of these videos, and that is to show you the darker side of McAllister, Oklahoma. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This here is a memorial made for many, many men who lost their lives in the mines in the Indian territories that would later become Oklahoma. Being a miner back in the days, the turn of the century was a very, very dangerous occupation. It was probably the most dangerous occupation you could possibly do. There's over 1,400 names on this wall right here. One of the worst mine disasters happened uh, right here in Krebs, which is just a few miles down the road from here. In 1892, an explosion happened there and uh, over 100 men lost their lives. And oftentimes, when a uh, mine would collapse, you were just buried in that mine. They would just close off the mine and just start uh, work on the next area. And you would just become, in a sense, a part of the work area of men mining coal or uh, what other, uh, whatever other uh, materials uh, they were digging for in that um, area. Across the street is the federal courthouse here, and this was the venue where Terry Nichols was tried and convicted of 161 counts of first-degree murder, uh, including a charge of uh, using a weapon of mass destruction, somewhere along those lines. Now, the reason why his trial was held here and not in Oklahoma City is because uh, his lawyers requested a change in venue just so be you know, because of all the publicity and they felt that he wouldn't get a fair trial. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous and, you know, I, I can go on and on about it, but that's what they did. So this was where his trial took place. Of course, he was found guilty on all of those and he was sentenced to, uh, I believe, 161 consecutive life terms in prison. Currently, he's being held I believe in Florence, Colorado at the Supermax prison. I could be wrong and I hope I'm not, but I think that's where El Chapo is too. So I don't know if they're uh, within close proximity of each other, but I do know that prison in Colorado is uh, quite notorious. That's where a lot of the uh, bad people go. Ted Kaczynski might be there too. I don't know. This is just stuff that I kind of read. So I could be right. But I very well could be wrong. This is the Oak Hill Cemetery. Right across the street, in my opinion, one of the greatest McDonald's that ever existed. No matter how busy that place gets, it doesn't matter. You will still get your food in a decent amount of time. That is the only McDonald's I've ever seen that does that. So, shout out to them. Anyways, enough about that. But so this is a story that I did um, a video on. I uh, wanted about uh, say about seven, eight months ago. Uh, that's the grave of Nanny Doss. Uh, if you guys don't know her name, well, I'll put the link in the description box below on um, the video that I did about her. And let's just say this: uh, if you married. That woman, uh, it's a good chance that she killed you. So, go check out that video. I'll explain the story uh, in more detail. 
Across the street from me is Greco Oil Field Services. This building used to be owned by a man by the name of Roger Osborne. He was 60 years old back in 2003. So on March 26, 2003, Roger Osborne and a man by the name of Ricky Kudage, he was 43 years of age, they came from the Oklahoma City area down here to do a little bit of uh, you know, odds and ends work. Uh, one of the things that they were working on was building a carport here. And there was also a bulldozer that needed some kind of uh, mechanical uh, fix or what have you. So these two men, they're here, March 26th, 2003, and they just totally disappeared. Now, a man later on in that afternoon came by here for some kind of business or what have you and noticed that there was a bulldozer inside of the building and there was a ladder that was knocked over and there appeared to be quite a bit of blood on the floor. Now, immediately he calls the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Department. They come out here and there's neither Ricky nor Roger anywhere to be seen. Now, eventually when you see some blood, you know, you're going to want to call the hospitals, like all the local hospitals in the area or any ambulance service to see if 911 was called, that they had a record of either gentleman having been hurt and having been rendered medical services. There is absolutely no records of them either going into an ambulance or going into either any of the quick care emergency facilities in the area or any hospitals. It's been 20 years since these two have disappeared. Now, contrary to popular belief of these guys possibly being in some kind of body of water, that is not the case. That is Hollywood. There's rumors going around from the citizens that I've talked to here in Alderson, which is right next to McAllister. Now, I'm not pointing fingers. This is just rumor, so I, I cannot confirm. But this was said by uh, a very uh, reliable source that knew the person, uh, they knew Roger Osborne. And there were rumors that this place uh, was uh, not necessarily a front for a chop shop, but that they were dealing with stolen car parts, um, possibly some uh, drug activity was happening over here. So this business wasn't a known business uh, where they, you know, abided by all the governed laws in our land. And contrary to popular YouTube belief about either one of these two individuals, Ricky or Roger, being in any kind of body of water, which is, you know, hearsay. Um, this area has a lot of oil drilling. And that same source that I spoke with, who I will not reveal their identity, also told me uh, that there's rumors going around that the two were thrown down an oil well uh, somewhere in this area. And right behind this place is a landfill. So as long as nobody confesses to this crime, uh, this will never, ever be solved. And more than likely, somewhere in the city of Alderson or maybe the surrounding areas in one of these oil wells are the corpses of both Ricky Kudich and Roger Osborne. If you drive about two miles down from that last crime scene, down Highway 270, you'll hang a left into this abandoned house. Now, as you can see, this house has been neglected for quite a number of years. You can see that some ruffians have broken the windows of this home. Back on August 26th of 2016, the owner of this property was driving down the highway and noticed that there was a car parked underneath this carport right here. So he pulls in and he probably parks right about there and he calls the police because he's thinking, okay, there's some people here that are just, you know, using his home, even though he doesn't live here and it's vacant, he's, they're using his property as uh, some kind of a rest stop. So he calls the police and they ask him over the phone, do you have a description of the people 
uh, that are in the car. He said there's two females. One of them is black. One of them appears to be uh, either Latina or white. And as he's walking under this very carport where I'm at right now, he looks inside and he notices that these people are not using his house for a rest stop. They're not sleeping. They're dead. He sees blood all inside of the vehicle. Homicide detectives from the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office race down from probably about, you know, McAllister, 10 miles yonder over here. Uh, they're taken to the county coroner's office and they are quickly identified as Tatanika Elix, 24 years of age, and Emily Morgan, 23. Now, Tatiana was described by her mother in an online article as basically a homebody. Uh, she had two kids, um, liked to laugh, liked to joke, be goofy. Uh, Emily was described as just a, a people person, um, always aspired to be a model, and she had one kid named Peyton who was her entire world. Now, her mother did say in that uh, same interview that Emily, like a lot of people, they get involved with the wrong crowd. Now, Emily's mother in that online article didn't describe exactly who these wrong types of people that her daughter was associating with were or are, but I suspect that the mother kind of has an inkling or an idea of who murdered her daughter. And these two women, Tatanika and Emily, they weren't childhood friends. They didn't know each other very long. They only know each other about a few months. So you got to understand that when Tatanika's family is absolutely shocked that she would even be associated with anybody who's selling any kind of drugs, you can only possibly think that maybe Tatanika, maybe she was bored in her life and maybe she was looking for some kind of excitement and Emily was that excitement. Who knows? Just making assumptions. We don't know why people do the things that they do. All we know is that on August 26th of 2016, right where I'm standing, two girls were found brutally murdered and going on seven years, the families still have no answers to who exactly it was that murdered them. Like many of my videos, our final stop is at a cemetery. This is the Dorsey Cemetery here in a very rural part of McAllister. We're gonna go back to April 9th 1995 in an area by Lake Eufaula a man is riding his four-wheel ATV by the side of the road near a guardrail he's looking under a tree and he sees on the ground two dead bodies immediately he runs home calls 911 Pittsburgh County Sheriff's deputies arrive at the scene they call the coroner's office they come and pick the people up after they process the scene, they're taken to the county coroner's office. It was a man and a woman with no identification. The man had been shot once in the chest and the female had been shot twice in the chest. It's been over 25 years since these two have been found and not identified. The bodies were badly decomposed, so they made a... Uh, clay model of what they had possibly looked like in life the male was described as being between the ages of 18 and 23 he had tattoos on both of his arms he was about five foot seven with either light brown hair or possibly dark dirty blondish hair he was of medium build the female was slender she was about five foot five, maybe five foot six. She had no tattoos, nothing like that. And as you can see, her hair would have been either like a light brown or possibly a dark blonde. You can see her smile. She has that kind of jagged tooth right there. So you might want to pay attention to that uh, mark or that characteristic on the Jane Doe. Somebody out there is missing a couple of their kids. And I find it shameful that nobody is missing a friend, a cousin, an uncle, a brother, a son, so forth and so on. 
Uh, it's really, really perplexing cases such as this. And uh, they were disinterred probably, I want to say about three, four years ago in the hopes of since, you know, DNA technology has been ever so advancing uh, very rapidly that they would be able to identify them. But uh, sadly, uh, they have not. Now, John and Jane Doe, they do not have a grave. But um, I suspect that their grave is right in the corner of this cemetery right here. They don't have a marker, but I can tell because in one of the pictures from, I believe, 2018, when they're disinterring the bodies, when they're exhuming them, that tree right there, kind of growing at an angle, is uh, clearly visible in that picture. And they were in this uh, general vicinity. So I'm going to go say that even though they don't have a marker, uh, their bodies would be right uh, in this area, right where I'm standing. Nobody knows who they are, huh? Nobody recognizes possibly that girl with that smile? Anybody? Okay, that wraps up another video. I thank you guys as always for watching. If anybody has any information of any of the cases that I've spoken about on today's video, please contact the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office. The number is 918-423-5858. 918-423-5858. I'm Lamont at Large. I'll catch up with you on the next vlog. I hope to see you there. Peace out.